So what we have here is a good representative of a number of different breeds of sheep and goats that are common in Texas. What we're looking at here is a breed of uh, Barbado and kind of Barbado cross sheep. Uh, these have been in Texas for a good number of years. They're very hardy, uh, easy care animals, very adaptive to the climate, do a good job without a whole lot of resources and are fairly parasite tolerant. Uh, the only disadvantage of this breed is they're a little bit slower growing um, and, and take a little bit longer to get to market. They also aren't a breed that has a lot of uh, meat on the bone, so they might not receive as high a prices as some hair sheep that would, uh, particularly the Dorper breed, that would be heavier muscled and would be a higher yielding carcass. So this next, next pen of uh, sheep is some older uh, fine wool rams, Rambouillet rams. I would imagine looking at their horn growth there, Reed, they're probably here for old age or some reason like that, uh, probably at the end of their breeding life back at the ranch. So they'll go ahead and harvest these animals at the end of their, their breeding careers. So as Bruce was saying, the, the horns give us an indication of their age. Uh, the ram in the middle is probably the oldest in that pen, which you can tell by the base of the horn and the length and the curl. That ram is, is uh, coming almost a, a full second curl. Uh, that second curl is indication that he's four years of age or older. Um, and, and so the other, the other rams in that pen have a little bit smaller base and aren't making as prominent of a second curl. Uh, most Rambouillet sheep or, or fine wool breeds, the rams are going to have horns. Uh, some of them are polled or can be polled. Uh, they have the polled genetics, but the vast majority of fine wool sheep, the rams are gonna have prominent horns and the ewes may have, maybe polled, they might have small skurs, uh, but aren't gonna grow a solid horn like a ram is. What we have here is a set of uh, Rambouillet ram lambs. Uh, these, these ram lambs were, were left unmarked, meaning that their tails were, were not docked at a young age, nor were they castrated. Uh, therefore, they're most likely going into or towards a non-traditional market. Um, this Rambouillet breed is, is also fairly well suited for the environment in Texas. Uh, their mothers will yield a high quality, high value fleece, and um, they're gonna receive a pretty good price at the sale today, whether they go towards a non-traditional or a traditional market. They are approaching um, the heavier end of what the non-traditional ethnic oriented buyers would like. Um, I'd say these lambs are, are 100 pounds. Um, in and around that, that weight range, which is gonna be a little bit on the heavy side. We're getting into those 50 pound carcasses, which is on the high side for what the non-traditional market is gonna prefer. What we have here in this, in this pen we're looking at now is a, a group of Rambouillet, uh, or fine wool type breeding. Uh, it appears to be a pen of weathers who've been uh, marked. They've had their tails docked at an appropriate length to protect against fly strike uh, and they've all been castrated as well so these lambs um, have dual market potential meaning that if there's a buyer in there looking for lambs to put in a feeding facility to take to heavier weights um, they're ready to go they're, they're ready to go and those lambs in here that have adequate condition that would yield a good carcass at a lighter weight then they're also um, they also could fit the non-traditional trade. So some of the advantages to the wool sheep is you have dual market potential. And there, there might, they, they might very well be people in there from both markets bidding on this same, same set of sheep. Yep, yep. This next pen's kind of a nice little example of, I guess, the modern, modern look in the meat business, Reed. Uh, we've got some boar, boar goats here on the left, uh, kind of a meat breed of goats, and they're standing here next to some dorper uh, hair, hair or meat sheep on the other side and as we uh, had mentioned these are relatively new breeds to Texas you know maybe since the 90s or early 2000s so mm -hmm. they're both destined for the for the table somewhere or the barbecue or uh, 
they're meat animals. Absolutely, both of these, uh, both species in this pen that we're looking at is uh, very well suited for the environment. They do well and they're very well suited for the current marketplace for sheep and goats. Most of these are, are going towards a, uh, a non-traditional ethnic based market which prefer uh, a lighter carcass than the more traditional markets. Those goats or um, carcasses are going to range in that probably 25 pound carcass as are the lambs. So that's a 25 to 45 pound carcasses is preferred by our non-traditional trade. But we've got a pen over here yep. uh, of some white hair sheep that looks like they almost have a mane like a, a lion. What breed influence gives us that solid white appearance and that mane? I would, I would have to guess Katahdin. Mm -hmm. uh, Katahdin, uh, but the original, the main breed that a lot of that comes from is the St. Croix. St. Croix, okay. So yeah. the St. Croix has the mane and that look, and then the Katahdin is a composite with St. Croix influence. So the St. Croix was developed, I believe, on the Virgin Islands, correct? That's, and that's one that's, reason they didn't need any wool on the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. It's a tropical climate, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the Royal White is a, a breed composite in Texas, which is a, a white dorper St. Croix cross. So a lot of producers find with a little bit of St. Croix and a little bit of Dorper, we get the fast growth and the meatiness uh, to hit that market with a little bit of parasite resistance. And the, the St. Croix, and maybe even more so the Katahdin, uh, not only do we get parasite resistance, but we get a larger kid or lamb crop. Uh, they, they can be, you know, 175% like a meat goat and upwards to 225% lamb crops with that breed as compared to the Dorper, which is probably 50% lower than that. In this pen here, we have a, a few hair sheep breeds of different kind. The one on the far left is uh, very classical of the Barbado black belly. You can see the black belly and the black points, black nose, the black eyes, the black eyebrows. With the, the tan body and the short tail, these animals are, are pretty hardy, pretty adapted to the climate. They do not require docking. Um, and, and typically, the marketplace that they're going to go towards wouldn't require castration either. Uh, but they are a little bit slower growing than some of our other hair sheep breeds.